Hello and welcome to the first ever live Q&A from the Bennett's Facebook page. Tonight we've come all the way up to the Isle of Man to track down one of UK motorsport's most exciting talents. He was on the track at Silverstone at the weekend and we now know that he was racing with a broken ankle. I can only, of course, be talking to Mr Cal Crutchlow. Cal, how are you doing? Yeah, very well, thank you. Yourself? Good, yes, I'm well, thank you. Good. Now remember, guys, we are live and interactive this evening here on Facebook. You can submit your questions to Cal uh, in the box that's just below. Make sure you tell us what your name is and where you're writing in from, because we like to know that as well. Uh, and we'll endeavour to get through as many questions as we possibly can. Now, Cal, we've literally ripped you out of your hospital bed tonight, so thanks for being with us. Um, how are you feeling? And tell me, you know, what's the extent, do you know now, what is the extent of your injury? Um, yeah, we knew the extent near enough straight away, as soon as we crashed on Saturday morning in Silverstone. But, um, yeah, we have a dislocated and broken ankle, but luckily it's back in place. Uh, there's no real like, long-term damage, just healing process is, is the main thing now, but uh, it's quite painful, but uh, it's, it's a lot more painful now than what it was on Sunday. So sure. it's, you know, sort of the come downs now after the race weekend, the adrenaline's a, a fantastic thing. So um, yeah. to now be back here, sort of recovering on the Isle of Man is, is the best thing. I've came back to see, uh, to see my, my doctor here, Ross Barker. Um, he's, you know, he's looking after the, the ankle really well. And we, I get admitted in the morning to the hospital mm -hmm. um, and spend the day there recovering. And then they let me out at night sort of thing. So That's good. Well, I'm glad that we've managed we to grab you. This. Indeed. Um, now, uh, if it, in the race itself, it wasn't in the race that you injured yourself, obviously. It was in the practice round on Saturday. Can you talk me through you know, exactly what happened? Did you know straight away that you'd, you'd you know, caused yourself an injury? Yeah, I knew straight away, but you know, from what happened last year with a broken collarbone not being able to race, I was <laughs> so disappointed. It was just a, another error on my part, but uh, we have to look into it because it was, it was one of those things. That there was three guys that crashed on the, exactly the same lap, and we all had the, the used tyre from the, the evening before, the, well, the afternoon before. We, we saved the tyre overnight. Oh. I was actually coming into the pits on that lap, so I wasn't pushing very hard at all. Um, mm -hmm. And then suddenly we sort of high-sided the, the bike, but I managed to shut the throttle fast enough where I actually fell off the side of the bike in the end, but it was still a very big crash. And uh, yeah, I hit, my, I hit my head quite hard as well, which was, yeah. uh, which was one of the worst things. So I was uh, a little bit dazed at the side of the track. So I couldn't get up anyway because of my ankle, but um, yeah, it was a painful experience. But I knew straight away I'd done something to my yeah. ankle because of the pain. Um, but if someone would have asked me when I was lying on the gravel, was I racing the next day, I would have said no. But <laughs> um, it was thanks to a lot of people, um, you know, and the medical staff helped us out great at the circuit and we managed to make the grid on the, uh, on the Sunday. Yeah, I mean, very well done for doing so. Uh, can I ask though, if it, if it wasn't your home track, if it wasn't in front of a home crowd, if you were somewhere else, do you think you would have raced with the injury? I don't know. A few people have asked me that same question. I think it's hard to say, you know, I have, obviously my passion is to race a motorcycle and you do anything to be on the grid, but no, probably I would have sat it out, you know, but I had a, I felt I had a, a big um, loyalty to the British fans, the people that turned up. There was so many people there with, mm -hmm. with flags and with T-shirts that they had bought, and they still came out on the Sunday knowing that I may, may not be riding. So I felt I owed it to them as, as well as, you know, my team for doing such a good job. And, sure. you know, I never made last year's race, so I had to get out of that there yeah, on the grid. Silverstone feeling a bit jinxed for you, do you think? I don't know, I think next year I'm just going to cruise around or maybe sit the practice and qualifying out and just try and do the race. So, yeah, maybe uh, do that, maybe best, just to be safe. Th or third time lucky, whichever one next year. So third time lucky, I Very might true. have a decent race weekend. <laughs> now off the track, do you actually race, uh, Race? do you actually ride on a motorbike on the roads yourself normally? Or? I do, I do. I have a, I have a motorcycle licence and luckily enough, you know, Yamaha managed to provide us with a, with a fantastic bike all the time. But, um, you know, there's also always one thing that, you know, you have to be careful on a on motorcycle you know, on the motorcycle, on the road, mm -hmm. um, you know, and with the, the, the campaign that I'm supporting, bikerpetition.co.uk, um, at the minute we're trying to get it to a compulsory question in the driving test, the UK driving test, because we want to make it aware, um, you know, uh, drivers aware of motorcycles on the road more. Mm. Um, on Saturday at 2pm we need to get 100,000 signatures, uh, we've now got 65,000, so Hopefully we can have a big push in these uh, next days to, to get that up to 100 and it will then be, you know, hopefully uh, mandatory that there's a question in every driving test in, in the UK for, for a motorcycle. Absolutely, we want to get at least one question and don't we, yeah. if not more. Um, so that's bikerpetition.co.uk guys, if you can lend your support to that, 
need 100,000 signatures by Saturday to try and push that through. Very important, of course, of course for all biker safety on the roads. Um, now, I should also mention that Cal has very kindly signed a replica helmet for us, and that is going to be up for grabs for his favourite question tonight. So get your thinking caps on, make sure that you're sending in questions that are, you know, got the edge, and you never know, you might be in with a chance of winning that. We'll be announcing uh, the winner after this uh, on Facebook and on Twitter. Uh, we've got some questions coming through, actually. Let's have a look. So Matt Whitaker's asked, when is Cal Crutch low? Hoping to be Cal Crutch less. How long do you think you'll take to heal? I don't know. The doctor said eight to 10 weeks of no weight bearing at all. Now, I've came back and seen my own doctor here and already on weight bearing on it. So, there's, you know, I have to be very careful because I don't want to make the injury worse, but mm. I'm a motorcycle racer. I have to push the boundaries and, you know, as far as that's concerned, I'm an athlete, you know. So, I want to get back out and, and training as much as possible, uh, as soon as possible. So, mm. the way that I look at it is if I can race a motorcycle the day after, then I can sort of, you know, push the boundaries a little bit. So, I did a little bit of cycling today in, in, a, in a gym. Um, under a sort of controlled environment mm -hmm. but by the end of the week I hope to be cycling outside but that's me you know I think that you know I don't like to leave anything to settle if it settles sure. then it just seizes up or locks up so hopefully I'll get rid of the crutches very very soon okay. um, but walking on it is probably the most painful thing actually um, at night it's you know it's quite hard going because it swells up a little bit but um, well, it swells up a lot, but you know we <laughs> have to say, con control it? <laughs> it with control it with the ice and, and compression, sure. but also do stuff with the physios and, and the, the doctors. So hopefully I can get rid of the crutches soon. Good. Well, you have I mean you've got sort of three races consecutively coming up now. Do you, are you hoping to be on the track for this weekend? Yeah, um, I've got you know obviously till next. I leave the Isle of Man next Tuesday, so I've got a good week of uh, of really recovering uh, and making sure the ankle's right. Um, obviously, it's going to be. It's going to be months before it's perfect, but mm -hmm. I think if we can go into these next races a lot more comfortable, that would be you know, a lot more helpful, I know that. Absolutely. Um, we're getting to your questions now, guys, coming through thick and fast uh, on, the, uh, on the feed. Uh, Dave Catling would like to know, if you'd been on the front row of the grid, would you have come first place on Sunday, do you think? I don't know. It's a hard one to say because looking at my race pace, we could have been definitely on the podium 100%. Now, if you're battling at the front and you've got, uh, you know, there's always, the way I look at it is there's always two carrots. If there's someone in front of you, then, you know, yeah. you've got to go and chase that carrot. But if not, there's a carrot pushing you from behind. So <laughs> if you're leading, so I think you've got to, um, I think that that would have made it a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I think my pace on the last 10 laps was definitely faster than something than Jorge on a few laps, but um, a lot faster than the other, the other guys on the podium. So... Mm -hmm. Would have been nice to say I would have been on the podium, but you know it never happened, and uh, maybe next time. Sure, I mean you moved an incredibly impressive uh, amount of places up, you know, starting from the back of the grid to come up to sixth. I mean you must be very proud of that. Are you happy with that result? Yeah, um, it's a bittersweet. You know, for me it's great that I came through, and it was an emotional weekend. You know, I missed out so much track time. You know, after the crash, that to to be able to come sixth after that is, I think, it's a good result, but. You're always thinking what could have been if you would have had a normal weekend and you would have, you know, qualified on the front two rows. Mm -hmm. Could I challenge for the win? Potentially, yeah. Would I challenge for the podium? Definitely. So I think, um, but it's easier said than done. We finished sixth and that was it. And we, the positive that I look at, it, we went into the race um, fifth in the championship and I came out of it fourth in the championship. So there was, you know, there was a good positive there, and um, I think we did a good job. Good stuff. Okay. Next question is from Anne Marie Troth, and she'd like to know. What age did your passion for motorbikes start and what was your first motorbike? She also adds, hope the ankle mends soon. Well, thanks for the hope the ankle mends. Um, <laughs> but I don't really know. I was, my dad used to race and I used to go to all the races a, as a youngster. And I used to ride around a little uh, Yamaha PW50. But I was never like mad into racing. I didn't want to race mm -hmm. as, as such at that age, which... In all honesty, I look at it as, as a big disadvantage because the guys that I race against now were riding when they were like tiny, you know, they were racing. So I always feel that as a bit of a disadvantage and they're a lot more natural than me in that sense. But I just played football. All I wanted to do was play football and be a footballer. Mm -hmm. So going uh, I, all the way up until 12, I was uh, still playing football and then I decided that I wanted to race a motorcycle and then I did three years of them clashing and that was a disaster because... I was turning up at one with a broken arm and the team manager going mad from that and then the other one with a dislocated knee from the other sport and then the <laughs> team manager going mad from that. So um, 
I decided my heart was set on being a motorcycle racer and I just grew to love it even more. And, you know, I would never have changed my decision, although, you know, I still enjoy watching football. Mm. Um, you know, I, it's t so difficult, I don't get time to go to the games anymore, but um, a few of the guys that I played against or with um, are now, you know, decent players. So, sure. uh, but, you know, I wouldn't change what I do for, for anything. Yeah, sure. Fantastic. Um, Paul and Stella on Facebook, they'd like to say uh, that we, we saw you on Sunday and thought you did absolutely brilliantly. We just wondered, did you catch the mouse yet? A little bit cryptic. Tell um, me about this. <laughs> it was actually a rat in the motorhome. Oh, nasty. And it was big. It was, <laughs> I, was not, um, I was not overly impressed, to be honest. Um, I, was, I, don't know, I don't know what it is. I don't like anything that moves too fast. So That's I was scared. You. I was absolutely <laughs> done. Um, so I was pushing Lucy out, she had a stick and was trying to get it, but in the end we had to move out of the motorhome home for the Hareth weekend, oh, right. but in the end we found it dead at uh, Le Mans. We ah, right. put poison down in that and it ate mm. it, so it must have died and we found it outside the motorhome, home, but s somewhere in the chassis, so, but it's dead now, so that's okay. that one done. Hopefully there's no more. You're done with motorhome <laughs> pets for now. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, well, I'll continue on the pet theme. Claire Kimball on Facebook has asked, um, do you have a nickname or uh, a pet name for your bike? No, not no. at all. I don't, I don't know what it is. Some riders have, you know, they really have a, a liking to one bike and not the other, mm. and they'll have a, a number one on it and number two on it. And um, I know my teammate, Andre, he names his bikes. Does um, he? And I don't, you know, it's fine for people to do that. You know, I have no nothing against it, but I really don't. You know, I don't care which one I get on yeah. and I don't care what number it says on it. They, I try and make them feel the same. So, you know, unless you're looking for a different setup on one or the other, then mm. it doesn't matter. But I don't have any pet names for it. No. Do you, think, uh, do you think, you know, naming the bike like Andrea does or, or having a, a preferred bike, actually, if you have to get on the second, it's a bit psychologically it could affect you. I don't, I don't, I really don't see it like that because... If you have a bond with the motorcycle that um, is, uh, you know, too much where you're naming them, when you crash them, what do you think? Yeah. You know, that's the way I always look at it, thinking I have to rename another one or, of course, you know, yeah. or that, that did that to me or, you yeah. know, you don't, I don't have a, a bond with it like that. Don't give it a personality, <laughs> best thing to do. Uh, Michael from Facebook has asked, um, why do you use the race number 35? I get asked this quite a lot and... It really is a good story. Um, I was number five for many years, mm -hmm. and I couldn't have five, so I stuck a three in front of it the year after. <laughs> and that's it. No, that's it. That's it. You know, I have no. Um, no, there's not. There's not like a, a link to it. There's nothing. No, there's nothing cryptic. It's not, not the age you're thinking of I, time. I or always like loved that. number five, and I even thought to this year go back to number five with, but Colin Edwards is number five, uh. and at the end of last year we thought he was retiring. So I said to him, I said, I'm having your number next year. And then he said, no, I'm not retiring. Uh. Uh, but then anyway, kept the number 35. But a few people like it now. So I think, you know, I'll stick with 35. It's a good number for me. I think so. Good stuff. Um, Craig Marshall has asked, um, he said, I've got an eight-year-old son who loves his pit bike. What advice would you give parents uh, who are, oops, sorry, that's just, what advice would you give parents who are lost as to which direction to take their kids in something they enjoy? It's a difficult one. I think, you know, you've got to let your, your, your son or daughter find their own way. If they want to do it, they, they want to do it. Now, obviously, there's, with, with racing a motorcycle, there's so many sort of safe places to be able to do it, you know. Don't just take them to a field and let them rip loose on a motorcycle. You've got to get into some sort of organisation or racing in a, you know, in a light-hearted way to start, you know. Obviously, if the person's competitive or, or the child's competitive, they're obviously going to want to win. But, you know, at the end of the day, I don't think force them, let them find their own feet and, and find their own way. And if that's what they love doing, then they'll ca continue to do it. But, sure. um, yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of kids that enjoy and watch the motorsport that, that grow up watching it and, um, you know, love to, love to race. So it's nice that you, you hear stories like that, that are coming mm. through. And, yeah, I think just uh, support as much as you can um, but you know don't push them into it you'll if, they, if that's it, yeah. what they want to do then that's what they want to do and um, you'll definitely know if they love it that much that that's what they want to do so hopefully they're good at it sure I mean your father obviously being a huge fan of of the, of the sport beforehand was he must have been thrilled really when you went through do you think it was a, it was a weird back feeling. on putting too much pressure on you yeah he, you know he's in, in complete all honesty he went to a track um, bought a bike the week before I learned how to ride it with gears 
went to a track and I crashed on the first ever lap. Oh, and he said, this is not for you. And I said, oh, just give me one more go. And then it worked out well. But, you know, there was no pressure for him to, for me to ride a motorcycle. In all honesty, he probably never wanted me to at the start. Um, but obviously now things have changed and, sure. you know, it's sort of my, my life. Um, yeah, but he's glad, but he's glad he didn't discourage you now. So. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, okay, Simon on Twitter has asked, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the jump from superbikes to MotoGP? I mean, obviously it might be something that some people have struggled with in the past, but I mean, do you think it's helped you? Uh, I mean, how, how do you feel about that? No, it's a massive jump. And mm. in, all honesty, in all honesty, I struggled with it. It was a, a big, big jump and one that I thought I wasn't going to struggle with. And, you know, I had the conversation with James Toslin, who was my teammate at the time. Um, and he'd been to the, to the MotoGP and he'd been in the same team. He'd been on the MR and he said, they're really tough. And obviously me said, yeah, 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 I understand. Never took his advice that much. But then, you know, can completely sympathise with what he's saying of how tough it was. Because last year was a really tough year. You know, I ended up having six operations in six months from racing. And it was just, you know, um, if it wasn't for the support of Lucy, and people that got me through last year, it was a real tough time. And I just wanted to go back to what I knew, which was super bikes. But in the end, um, you know, I started to learn the, the, the MotoGP bike a lot more, changed my riding style and enjoy riding it. The gap between the factory bikes and our bikes got a lot bigger. So it looked like we actually wasn't improving, but we were a week on week making big strides. So I think um, th there's so many differences. The chassis are different, the electronics are different, the tires. The whole environment of being in GPs is 18 races, not 12. It was a long year, but you know, I think last year was character building. We had a, a really tough year, but Yamaha stuck by me, and a lot of people stuck by me, and sort of now look at where we are. You know, we've made such a big jump from last year to this year. Um, hopefully, it will continue on that next jump for next year as well. Fingers crossed. Um, Michelle Goddard has asked if you could race any bike, past or present, in any class. Which would it be? I don't know. I've always wanted to ride a an old 500 two-stroke. I don't know why. I think it's because they they were aggressive. They were difficult to ride, and I always feel like I'm a rider that will try and ride something with square wheels. You know, if the but if the wheel won't turn around, I'll carry on trying to ride it. But <laughs> um, you know, I do the best job possible on a weekend. If you can't find a setup, you have to race with what what you've got's the best. So. I've always thought them bikes were really difficult to ride, and I always mm -hmm. used to watch as I was uh, a kid. I used to watch Valentino even when he was racing them, and think, "Oh, them things are, you know, they're animals." You know, and I would have loved to have raced that yeah. um, and just have a have a go on one of them. And I got a privilege of going up Goodwood, uh, Goodwood Hill, uh, a few few years ago on a on a Yamaha 500, and, but it was only up a hill, so I was disappointed I didn't get to race one. But it would be one of them. It'd be a Yamaha 500 okay. two stroke. Good stuff. Um, and you talk about that bike being a bit of a challenge. Do you like a challenge with what you're riding then? Do you think it's... I don't... I, I like to... Um, I mean, they say prove, do, prove something. are hard to ride. Would you, would you want to take that on, do you think? I don't know. <laughs> I think, you know, they, I try to prove something wrong. Not necessarily people, but when people say, oh, it's difficult to do this, difficult to do that, I like to think that I could do it, you know. So, I don't know. It must be the self-belief in me and the determination to, to want to do something like that. So... I always, uh, yeah, I probably that's probably why I want to do that. Okay, good stuff. Um, we've got a question from John Hookway now. Um, Ka would Cal prefer to win his home GP or a Motor GP crown with no home win? A Motor GP crown with, with no home win. No home win. <laughs> I know that sounds bad, and no, all the British fans that come. <laughs> I would love to be on the podium with the best race ever, mm. but still win the championship instead of being having the win. But I think everybody would prefer that. Yeah. Um, but. I'll have a home win at some point, but I don't know when it'll be. Um, so hopefully we'll have many over the career and a crown would be fantastic as well at some point. Sure. Well, uh, on the subject of, of perhaps winning, um, if you did win, or when, you, when you win, I should say, uh, when, you win your, um, uh, when you win at the British Motor Grand Prix, uh, will you be close to tears, do you think, when they play the national anthem? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know what it is. It's, Racing makes me quite an emotional person now and again, whether it's, you know, being um, overjoyed or angry with myself or angry with that I couldn't get something done or, you know, I, uh, yeah, I'd definitely be emotional. So it's, you know, something you're passionate, passionate about. It's, you know, I dedicate my life to it and, mm -hmm. and others around me dedicate their life to it for, you know, for me to go race a motorcycle. So 
yeah, you know, 365 days a year, I'm sort of thinking about motorcycle racing, and that's what I do for my living, but I love it, so... Sure. Oh, yeah, I'd, I'd probably be crying, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, Catherine on Facebook has asked, um, James Toesland is about to get married and settle down. Are there any plans for a Mrs Crutchlow? Um, yeah. Is Lucy watching tonight? <laughs> I don't, she'd probably be on her way to pick me up. I don't know about <laughs> watching. Um, but, yeah, definitely, you know, I'm very comfortable in our relationship with me and Lucy. We have a, a good relationship. Obviously, she's, as I said, she's stuck by me through thick and thin mm. over over the years. Um, you know, I had a great World Super, Super Sport Championship and then Superbike went really well. Last year was a really tough year, but she always reminds me that um, I was only fast when I started going out with her, which is quite funny. <laughs> She's probably right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'll have to marry her. And then, then, <laughs> then you I'll go even faster. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, Mark Bailey has said, asked, um, in your opinion, how much hairspray does Matt Roberts have to use to keep his quiff in perfect order for the camera? What do you think? Can a day? A lot. <laughs> a lot. I, um, yeah, it's come into a, uh, a bit of a, a running joke between me and Matt. And he stands at the, uh, he stands at the grid now with the, the mic like really far <laughs> back so that you can yank it away as soon as I say something bad because I think the first time I swore and I didn't I don't know if I didn't realize I'd swore or I didn't know if it, if it was live or what and then then I started telling him about his hair because he does really spend hours <laughs> doing his hair um, and then his his whole attire that he wears he mm. wears silk bottoms to one race and he wears he? something else to the next race so but it's good Matt's a great guy so we get on well as friends as well as uh, yes. you know Working colleagues as such. You can rib him a bit. Yeah, you yeah you can give him, some, give him some grief. Good stuff. Well, uh, we're on the subject of beauty routines at the moment. Mark, you all would like to know, do you think Jorge plucks his unibrow? Um, <laughs> you notice any tweezers lying around in the dressing room? <laughs> no. I, I, he's, uh, <laughs> I, know, I know that he grew some hair very recently. Um, but how he, <laughs> how he grew it, I don't know. So, yeah, he's quite, uh, quite meticulous about that, but he's... Jorge is one of the nicest MotoGP riders you can meet. One of the real nice, genuine guys and sure. the best talent on the grid, as in how he's so consistent, how he comes across to people. Um, he's, you know, he's sort of a true champion. Mm -hmm. Let's turn the tables on you. What's your beauty routine? None whatsoever. Oh, come on. I never shave. I never... <laughs> no, I've not... Uh, I don't know. I don't really... I'm not saying I don't care what people think or what they uh, think I'm just me and you know I always say the truth and I always want to be honest and my characters to sort of I don't know probably be rough and ready and mm -hmm. just get on with racing a motorcycle very good nothing like a rough, rough and ready rider I don't think uh, now we've got a question in here from Vinnie Gascoigne I want your honest truthful opinion on this now would you rather be attacked by a dozen duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck um, I would say one horse sized duck because I don't, I'm not saying I don't particularly like horses, I've just not had the best experiences with them. Not that I've had a bad experience, just I don't really get on with them. Normally really? if I'm cycling or something or I'm coming in the car, they'll, I don't know, it must just be me a bit on edge that they jump. And so <laughs> I think I'd probably prefer the duck. <laughs> well, if they spook at you, you're right, the 12 miniature horses might just spook away. Might be okay. <laughs> Thanks for that question, Vinny. Um, David Powell has asked, what are your goals for the next 10 years? It's quite an in-depth one there. What are, you, what are your uh, main goals? In 10 years' time, I'll be 36. So I would say um, you're at the sort of age of coming out of your career, mm. um, maybe thinking of retiring by then, if... I've done everything I want to have done in my life. Hopefully in the 10 years, sitting, drinking a pina colada on the beach. Nice. But, <laughs> but I hope to have achieved my goal of being a MotoGP world champion then. So it may be, you know, it may look a far-fetched thing at the moment, but, you know, that's what we're building towards. And hopefully, you know, we'll, uh, we'll be still living my dream in, in the next coming years in Moto Grand Prix. And, you know, I'll get a shot at that title soon. Sure, good stuff. Uh, what do you make of Casey Stoner's decision to retire? Yeah, it was very disappointing. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it was more disappointing for everybody else than it was for him. I think in his whole approach to racing, um, it's been fantastic over the years. People don't really give him credit for how fast he is. He is by far the fastest guy on the planet. Maybe just over the years he hasn't um, put the championships together, whether that be machinery or... Uh, himself sometimes, but
but he's by far the fastest guy. And when he did get the machinery, he went and won last year. Mm. And when he won the time before, maybe he didn't have the best machinery, but he was the best guy. So um, it's, it's disappointing because he's leaving the sport for, for reasons, you know, that, you know, honestly, he's correct in some ways. So it's just, you know, I think that um, him leaving, I think, is a, is a wake-up call for a, for a lot of people. Sure. But I think if his passion's not there for the sport anymore, I think he's right to retire. And um, he's definitely done a great job and, and left a, you know, a legacy on the sport as yeah. well. But different when he starts to win, though. Do you think if he has another good season, then he might change I, his mind? I don't think. I think he'll stop, and I think that'll yeah. be it, you know. Okay. Um, he said that he's going to retire, and, you know, why not? You know, he's sort of done everything in motorcycle racing. The pinnacle is Moto Grand Prix, and if you can win Moto Grand Prix, you've done everything you sort of need to do. And now, um, you know, obviously other people want to win it more, more and more times. He's won it twice, and that's enough for him. Ho you know, hopefully for his sake, yeah, he wins it this year. Um, and then he can say he's got three, and then he can leave on a, on a high note. But um, now Casey's one of the best, there's no doubt. Sure, good stuff. Okay, back to your questions here. Remember, we are live and interactive here on Facebook tonight. You can submit your question uh, to Cal. We're on air until 7.30. So just pop your question in the box that's below us. And also make sure you tell us where you're writing in from and what your name is as well. You have got the chance to win a signed replica helmet. Uh, obviously, it's been signed by Cal, not by me. Uh, and you can win that uh, for the best question. So get your thinking caps on. Um, Karen Wilford would like to know, uh, why are you doing this web chat when you should be getting ready for the pub to watch the England match? It's a good question. Um, I don't go down the pub because I can't drink because I'm useless at it. Uh, <laughs> we had this conversation before I saying I don't drink alcohol. You need to practice. I'm not, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying I don't drink alcohol. It's maybe twice a year or something like that, but I am really bad at it. And if I have two pints, I feel it for a week. So mm. there's no point in me going to the pub. Um, I do obviously enjoy the football, so it's on record and I'll watch it when I get back. Good so stuff. hopefully England will win. <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed, eh? Um, OK, we've got another question uh, from Colin Moore. Cal, will you ever race the Isle of Man TT? I love the TT and I'm a massive supporter of it. You know, obviously I live in the Isle of Man and John McGuinness is a great friend of mine. Um, racing it is a different thing. I did my parade lap this year and it was fantastic and I did the one last year and... I have a massive passion for, for racing on the roads, but I don't know. It, you know, it, it's not a question I can answer yes or no, because mm. I would never say no, but I would also not at the minute say yes, because I race MotoGP and that's where, you know, um, I lo you know my racing lies is on the circuit, sure. not on the roads. Okay, good stuff. Uh, one last question quickly, and then we're going to hit you with a quick fire round of questions. Um, Gary on Facebook, if you were a betting man, would you put money on getting the spare Yamaha seat for the next person? How about you? Um, if I was a betting man, I, Who'd I don't you put know. money on? Would it be you? Would it be Andre? I, I really don't know. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, I've got a good shout at it, mm -hmm. but, you know, it stands to the Yamaha bosses, I think, at the minute we've proved what we can do. Andrea has been in a factory team for three years already. Mm -hmm. He's came back to a satellite team and he's obviously one of the best riders around. But he's already been in a factory team. Maybe that will swing in my favour. But um, my priority is to stay with Yamaha. They've been very loyal to me over the last four years. And hopefully, um, you know, I can repay them this year and we can do a good job with them. So I'll wait to see what they want to do um, first and foremost. But if not, we'll, we'll look at other options that are on the table. Good stuff. Okay, get ready. Quick fire round. I'm going to throw some questions at you. You've got to be as quick as you can in your answers. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Favourite sandwich? Uh, tuna mayonnaise. Quick, quicker. Tuna mayonnaise. If you could live anywhere, where would you live? Isle of Man. <laughs> uh, Favourite motorcycle racer, past or present? Oh, that's tough. Um, I'd have to say Barry Sheen. Okay. Do you have any nicknames? If so, why? Uh, no, the latest one was the honey badger, but I don't really know why, because <laughs> it's, it's supposed to be the most fearless animal, or rodent. Ooh, so. okay. We've already talked about the rodents, we won't <laughs> go there. Um, what's your preferred way to relax? Uh, cycling. Cycling, good stuff. Yeah, you're a big cyclist. Cycle around here, don't you? Yeah. Good stuff. Most memorable race and why? Uh, most memorable race could have been uh, this weekend, just gone, because it was a tough weekend, but other than that, winning the World Super Sport Championship in Portimao, Good stuff. Do you have any pets other than the rat? No, but I, would, I do love dogs. So it's, when I stop, I've said we'll get some dogs. Okay. But, and also a farm, maybe. Rugby <laughs> or football? Football. Favourite racetrack? Uh, I like Silverstone. I have to agree. Silverstone's one of my favourites. But in the UK, 
Um, yeah, Silverstone in the UK and then abroad maybe, I like Monza, I really like Monza. Okay, what was your first ever accident? Uh, when, uh, when I crashed the week that I first started first racing. first ever at race. So, Dar <laughs> Darley Moore, I managed three corners and that was it. Okay, and um, we were out of time for that, fantastic. Um, oh, last one, actually, squeeze in. Favourite holiday? Favourite holiday would be in America. Me and Lucy love America, so when we go there. Very good. Do you get a Winnebago go around? No, we normally go into California and have the same, go to the same sort of place. So oh, fantastic. Because we love it there. Good stuff. Um, now, obviously, the football's going to be on shortly. Uh, England, what do you think the chances are? Do you think they're going to do all right? I hope they win because it would be nice to, you know, start my next week's rolling as well with England winning and then hopefully I can carry on it for them as well. <laughs> that would um, be good, wouldn't it? <laughs> hopefully Rooney will come through for us. Do you think? I hope so. <laughs> Fingers crossed, Dave, folks. Let's let's hope that they do they do do well. Do you like to watch any other sports other than football? I do. I I follow cycling massive. Cycling is my my thing apart from uh, from motorcycle racing. Um, but I generally follow all sports, and it's nice mm. that there's always a crossover because. A lot of the sports people like motorcycles and we like their sport as well, so it works hand in hand. Well, that's nice. You got any friends in other sports? Uh, yeah, in, in a few, in a few. So, but I, uh, I tend to just stick to the cycling. I can't do too many because my brain will be fried. Sure. Okay. Well, thank you so much for having joined us this evening. Uh, we're almost out of time, guys. But I did just want to quickly remind you about the Biker Petition, which is on bikerpetition.co.uk aiming to get 100,000 signatures uh, by Saturday, and that's to ensure that a compulsory question or questions is put into the theory test and the driving test here in the UK, because currently that isn't the case. And of course, you know, we really want that, don't we, don't we uh, Cal, in order to make sure there's safety on the roads for, for bikers? Yeah, definitely. I think it's something we should all push, and then hopefully we can get the 100,000 by Saturday. Indeed, we'll try and do that for us, guys. That would be fantastic. Thanks to all of you for submitting your questions this evening. Uh, we have had quite a selection, haven't we? Have you picked a favourite at all yet, do you think you know? Uh, I think I know, but think you I'll know. keep it to myself. OK, good stuff. <laughs> We're going to be announcing that a little bit later on Facebook and on Twitter. So if you did submit a question to us uh, this evening, then you could be in with a chance of winning. So keep your eye out, because you could be in a chance of winning, of course, a signed replica helmet uh, from Cal here. Okay, good stuff. Uh, now, guys, do remember uh, that uh, you can obviously follow Cal's progress. You know, throughout the sport, he's going to be uh, he's going to be racing hopefully next weekend as well. Fingers crossed. Uh, let's uh, let's see if let's see if you make it. You know, you're feeling okay at the moment, though, aren't you? Yeah, I'm feeling okay. So no operation needed on the ankle. So that's a good start, that's and we can start, yep. go into Assen, Saxon Ring, and, and Mugello. There are all three races back to back. Hopefully a bit fitter than what we are now, so. Sure, okay. Um, it, just in terms of this week and your training and, and your recovery, well, what is the plan? Um, to be admitted to hospital every morning and do a, days of, uh, a day of, uh, of rehab there and also using the hyperbaric chamber on the Isle of Man here, uh, mm -hmm. which is a great facility we get to use. So um, that, that recovery will hopefully, you know, I, I intend to do a little bit of cycling, you know, to keep the, the sort of fitness going and keep some muscle in, in the left leg, so. Um, Hopefully that'll work fantastic and go into Assen a lot, you know, a lot stronger than what we went into Silverstone. Good stuff. Okay. Well, good luck, of course, with thank all you. your upcoming races. Again, thank you so much for joining us this no evening. Problem, thanks. Uh, thanks to Bennett's, the UK's number one bike insurance provider. And, uh, and thanks to you guys for watching us. Uh, thanks for all your questions that you've submitted. And as I said, one of you may be winning that helmet. So make sure you check out Twitter and Facebook in the coming few hours to find out who that is. Thanks and see you, there. See you soon. Bye.